Good afternoon, and I'd like to thank everybody for being here today. And I hope everybody had a thank, uh, had a happy and safe Thanksgiving over the weekend. And I know that this Thanksgiving looked a little different for many of us, including myself and my family. But I really want to take the time to, uh, we made a call to the public, uh, to all Missourians prior to Thanksgiving, and I want to thank them for taking heed to that warning uh, that we put out. We've seen by the traffic levels, we've heard from many people that altered their Thanksgiving plans to take precaution, and I want to make sure and thank Missourians for stepping up, doing the right thing on their own, taking the responsibility of this. I also encourage that we're not out of this situation by a long way. We have to continue the same aggressive nature that we have over the last week or so that we've been doing. We need to continue that. Again, the next two to three weeks are critical as we move forward on that. I also want to thank the House and the Senate for their leadership on the supplemental bill, uh, getting that passed and get it to the governor's office. I want to thank them for that and the work that they've done on that issue to make sure that we have the ability to use the COVID 19 funding and the CARES Act funding between now and the end of the year. We continue to closely monitor the spread of COVID-19 and the capacity of Missouri's health care system. As I have discussed the past few weeks, staffing is one of the biggest challenges facing our hospitals right now. The issue is not so much about physical beds or space. We have plenty of hospital beds available. The issue is that there aren't enough doctors and nurses to staff these beds. Since the start of COVID-19, we have been in constant communications with the Missouri Hospital Association, the infectious disease doctors, numerous and other healthcare providers, and our COVID-19 fusion cell. We have continually monitored Missouri's statewide healthcare system and focused on supporting our hospitals and healthcare workers as much as possible. Since March, we have waived over 600 regulations, including many, to help hospitals and healthcare providers with staffing needs and other COVID-19 challenges. We have distributed over 206,000 cases of PPE to healthcare providers, including 17 million gowns, 14.2 million gloves, 7.2 million surgical masks, 4.9 million N95 masks, and 1.4 million face shields. We have also allocated over $5 million to expand broadband for telehealth across the state. We remove barriers to allow doctors to treat more patients through telemedicine. And we have granted and secured numerous other waivers to expand hospital capacity, I'm sorry, cap capabilities, and allow more personnel to care for COVID-19 patients. We are currently doing all we can at the state level to help with staffing challenges. The Missouri National Guard and the Missouri Disaster Medical Assistance Team are already being utilized, and we continue to exhaust all other options. To further assist and prepare for a potential surge this winter, the state and multiple geographically dispersed hospitals will be partnering with a company called Visinet to bring an additional staff and further expand capacity. The plan will allow for up to 760 additional staff across the state, including region registered nurses, respiratory therapists, certified nurse assistants. When fully deployed, this will add nearly 600 total beds to our statewide bed capacity, including some critical care beds. This plan will last for 12 weeks bringing us to the end of February. The state will fund the first phase of this project through the end of the year using CARES Act funding. Our hospital partners will fund the remainder. States like Arizona have also worked with visiting through the COVID-19 crisis, and we are hopeful that this will provide meaningful support for our hospitals and the people of Missouri. 
I want all Missourians to know that if you are sick, we are going to take care of you. Today, we have the Missouri Hospital Association President, CEO Herb Kuhn, is here with us to give an update on our hospitals. Herb? Thank you, Governor. You and your team have been there every step of the way from early March when we first got our first patients on the pandemic to this important announcement today. And I want to thank you for this uh, from all of us across the state. With this new agreement, the administration is moving aggressively to help expand the number of healthcare professionals available to provide essential care during the COVID-19 surge. Throughout the past weeks, the infection rates and hospitalizations for COVID-19 have continued to climb. This is happening in all parts of the state. It's a challenge in communities both urban and rural, and it is affecting the ability of all hospitals, from rural hospitals to major urban uh, medical centers, to care for patients. The state's new partnership with Vizient will allow rapid deployment of staff to support additional hospital capacity in all regions of the state. In the days and weeks ahead, as these workers arrive, they will provide essential support to our hospitals and healthcare workers, those who have been on the front lines of care since March. These extra skilled caregivers are essential to address the staff shortages that are presenting a critical threat to hospital capacity here in Missouri. Governor Parson's plan will provide a bridge to support care for all patients needing urgent life-saving care, not just patients with COVID-19 and it will reduce the chance that the state's hospitals are overwhelmed by a COVID-19 surge in the weeks and the months ahead. Despite this needed assistance, Missourians must remain vigil. MHA is among a coalition of stakeholders, from rural advocates to business leaders, encouraging Missourians to help stem the tide of COVID-19 in our communities. Infection is upstream of hospitalizations, and to weather this storm, we have to reduce the infection rate. And I will also give another big shout out to the governor. He has been unrelenting in reminding everyone of their responsibility to help us mitigate the infections across the state. This announcement today could not come at a better time. Although it is impossible to predict the exact impact of the Thanksgiving holiday and the holidays in December will have on hospitals' ability to manage the surge, the early indicators are somewhat troubling. The governor talked about how good people were across the state of, of stepping down and trying to avoid congregate opportunities where we could pass infections. But when you look at some of the data, it is a bit of concern that we have to keep an eye on. Missourians' travel for recreation and retail increased 40% from, uh, on average between Monday, May 23rd and Thanksgiving Day. That means the next couple of weeks will be very critical for us to watch. That's why this announcement today is so important, so impactful, so helpful. We are grateful to Governor Parson's support as we address a critical moment for the state's health care system, hospitals, and caregivers. And we appreciate all Missourians' help in this crisis. What you do to mitigate today will make a diff big difference for us December and as we move uh, more into the winter months. Thank you all. Thank you, Herb. I also want to recognize Todd Richardson's uh, behind me here today, Director Richardson, uh, for all his work of putting this plan together. Uh, him and his team did that, and I want to thank him for his part in this and making sure that we continue to support uh, our hospital, hospitals with all means that we have available. And uh, again, just want to thank him for his hard work and his team's hard work. Now, we are thankful for the Missouri Hospital Association, our hospitals, our doctors, our nurses, and all health care workers across the state. For nine months, they have been on the front lines without a break. They are tired and overwhelmed, but they continue to rise to the challenge and take care of Missourians. We cannot thank them enough, and we will continue to support them in any way that we can. Thank you, and God bless. Kelly, I'll turn over to you for some questions.
Hi. Um, when it comes time for hospitals to pay their share of this company, um, can they use CARES Act funding for that? We're continuing to look at that, the CARES Act availability of dollars. The federal government has made some changes recently in the, the resources, the CARE Act dollars that hospitals have received. Um, there has been a new set of FAQs that have put up that we're looking at and evaluating, and we're talking to our congressional delegation about that. It's our fervent effort to make sure that they can deploy those resources to help fund this needed and important activity. And Ben, um, can you speak briefly about where these extra staff members would be coming from, like which other states? We don't yet know. I mean, the important thing about this and what the governor and what Todd Richardson has done here is really tapped into and create a unique public-private partnership where we're getting a, a national company with national scale because what we know is this pandemic is in every state. And so where before we might be competing with just a few states, we're competing against 49 other states plus the District of Columbia now for this important staff. Bringing this new scale into play is gonna really help us look at that. And they're gonna be looking from all across the country. And another important thing that the governor has done and what he mentioned in his comments is he has put in place long before this the important waivers so that as healthcare clinicians come from other states, their license in that other state will immediately be recognized in Missouri so they can go to the front line, be a caregiver almost immediately. That's gonna be very helpful for us. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. And this might actually be um, for um, Governor Parson, I'm not sure, but do, do you have an estimate of how much this, uh, of like CARES Act funding, this will cost the state and then after cost the hospitals, like an estimate of cost? Now, I'll, I'll let the governor speak to that, but we don't yet know because, um, you know, the, the surge continues to play out. It'll be across the state, it'll be regional. So I think that is going to be played out, but they've put in place the architecture so that we can make sure the needs are met and then we'll be able to know exactly what it's gonna cost, but I'll let the governor speak to that as well. Let me, before I get started with any questions, let me just, uh, I was talking to her before we come out here today and I think it's a good reminder for everybody when we all started with COVID-19, uh, it seems like we've been dealing with it for a long, long time. Uh, but nine months ago, uh, we met every challenge that come forward. When we first started, remember, there wasn't even uh, the supplies needed to do a test, that we were going to run out of test. And there was a big panic about that, and we didn't because people come together in this state, Missourians did, and found solutions to that. When we started trying to do mobile testing, do the testing numbers were very few in the beginning. People again come together and found out a way that we could move forward in this state. When we didn't have the equipment and we couldn't get it from other states, from other countries, Missouri businesses stepped up and met the challenges. I think as a reminder to everybody, when somebody is always looking for somebody to blame or to find all the worst they can in a scenario, I think it's important we've met every challenge to fighting this virus. And I want every Missourian to know we will continue to do everything within our powers to fight this virus. And we will continue to do that. And I think that just is a great deal to the people of this state for what they do, what we've been through, and what we continue to do. But at the end of the day, this is a virus. Nobody has control over this. And I think if there's one thing we've learned out, we've all learned that uh, of how these numbers can affect us and how this can spread. And we need to continue to fight it every day, each and every one of us as individuals, the best we can to fight this virus to protect one another. Questions? Hi, Governor. Um, just kind of the same question. Do you know how much CARES Act funding uh, this will cost the state for the rest of the year? And is this something that the uh, legislator had to uh, discuss as well? You know what? We'll get into more details of what this is going to cost. And we'll tell you the exact amount once that's kind of finalized. It all depends on how many, how much uh, people you're going to bring in and at what stages you bring that in. Uh, but we'll be able to release that exactly what it will be. It'll be CARES Act funding, and then we'll just have to see what happens into the next year. But uh, funding is always an issue when we talk about that, when we talk about CARES Act funding. But I think you also got to remember whatever the cost is, this is about saving people's lives. This is about taking care of Missourians, and we're going to do everything we can within our powers to do that.
And was this a part of the like supplemental budget that was passed, or did the like the House and the Senate need to discuss this? I th there was money in the CARES Act funding, and then the supplemental helps us. So I th it's a combination of all. You know, we didn't know he was going to do this, so the planning stage becomes: can we get the CARES Act funding to do this? And we believe we do have those resources, and we definitely believe we have it now with the supplemental. Thank you. Hi, Governor. Um, so this is a step in making sure that hospitals are staffed um, because we have seen hospitalizations grow over the past few weeks. Studies have shown that masks drastically reduce infection rates. Are you thinking about instituting a mask mandate seeing the way that the numbers are going and the infection rate as well? You know, I, I think we've been over this question I, I don't know how many times. Uh, there's nothing changed with what I'm, how the policy I'm going to be in the state of Missouri. I think, again, I'm going to go back to Thanksgiving holiday when we asked people to do more, to be responsible, they did. And I, I believe that's showing up that they did. We just got to continue to do that uh, in that area. So uh, the policy is not going to change uh, on this end of it. Uh, we just wanted to make sure we're doing everything we can with these resources today to really give those frontline employees uh, the ability to care for people and to take breaks with where they can and take care of the ones that have been on the front lines for nine months. Hi, Governor. This is a, just a two-part question. The first question is, why is this only for 12 weeks? Well, I, I think it's just the first stage of it. I, I don't know that it won't be six months. I don't know it'll be a year. I don't think any of us knows where we're going to be in 12 weeks. So uh, I think the initial plan is this. We know the vaccine's coming. We know that that is going to have a factor. And I think by the end of February, the distribution of the, that vaccine, uh, whether it's in Tier 1, Tier 2, uh, is going to make a difference. So I think what we do is we're just going to reevaluate it in February, see where we're at. I don't think anybody knows how we're going to come out over the holiday season. I think we're all concerned about that. But again, I think if people take that personal responsibility, uh, we'll be able to do it. But we're going to be able to get a good look to see after the holiday season where we're at and then reevaluate the program after that. Thank you. The second part I had was CARES Act funding lasts until the end of the year. So how will the state pay for January and February? Yeah, we're, we're going to figure it out. We're, we're, we're going to figure out whatever resources we can to pay for. We, we think the CARES Act funding, I, I don't know what they're going to do in Washington, D.C. Um, I assume there'll be some other package come out. I assume that's going to happen at some point. I don't think any of us know when that's going to happen. But, uh, you know, the first priority is going to be take care of the Missouri citizens. Hi, Governor. Um, why this company? I'm sure it's one most people haven't heard of. So how did you reach this company in particular? Well, I, I think we're going to talk more about that. We'll talk about the financing. Todd maybe could answer that if he wants to answer. I think it's a matter of who's available out there and how quickly are they available and do they have the resources we know that they've actually utilized and it's worked. And I, I think one of the things where they've been in Arizona before, we know that had a very positive effect. So uh, it's been proven, and I think that was one of the selection process. But if you want to go into further detail, we can get Todd up here, or, we, or you can contact him and he'll give you that information. All right. Thanks, everybody, for being here today. Thank you.